Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. I want to say this first and foremost. I always give people their flowers. So I want to say, me and my dad love you on Shark Tank. Appreciate that. Yes. Shark Tank is one of those shows a family can sit down, we can watch it together, we can cosplay as entrepreneurs, and vicariously live through a fun piece of unscripted, semi-reality content. So thank you for giving us that. Thank and it's 14 you. seasons, right? 14. Okay. But the, the, the truth is, we don't script anything because we see them the same time you do. We had no idea it would just blow up this way. I mean, right. it's a remarkable platform. Yes. And it supports American entrepreneurship. What's wrong with that? It's amazing. Now, you have been making your rounds. We were speaking backstage. Just to give everyone context, obviously we're talking about crypto, FTX. You've been making the rounds, testifying before Congress, <laughs> going on Squawk Box 78 times. <laughs> and everybody's asking you about, you know, your endorsement of FTX, the $15 million bag. But nobody's asking you, how you doing? <laughs> how are you feeling? Well, let's just get the numbers right. It was $18 million. 18. Okay. And I, it's all gone, and I get it. But you've got to understand something about venture investing. FTX was nothing but a startup, OK? Right. Basically 18 months old. That's it. And in venture- Wait, but can, you, but can you take me through the relationship timeline of you and electrocuted? How long did you got? <laughs> We can run it. I told you. I was like, let's let's do it. So 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 because because just for context, at first, uh, you've been on Squawk Box, you've been on programs, yeah. and you, you're like, Bitcoin is dog shit. This is awful. Yes. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, um, I think I did say I think I did say that because um, at that time the regulator was very very negative. Yes. And then countries like Canada, Switzerland, United Arab Emirates, France, it, right? England, Australia, yep. they opened up. Yep. And if you're an investor that I, like me, I invest internationally. I started to allocate to it. Right. And then you start thinking, you go, look, you know, SPF. It's, it's starting to open up internationally. It's, it's becoming more regulated in, 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 in Switzerland and other countries. And so, you know, clearly this guy who's um, running this Bahamian orgy um, <laughs> is running a responsible operation. So how did, he, how did he get in your DMs? How did he penetrate that heart? So obviously at a time in 2021 when FTX was out financing, doing rounds at a 23 billion valuation, mm -hmm. That was the hottest deal on the street. If you look at the people that invest in that, it's the right. who's who of venture capital. Um, dude, I was pissed that I wasn't asked. Yeah. And when so I look at that role <laughs> and it's like Sha Shaquille O'Neal, right. like Steph Curry, Tom Brady, well, those that's how you know I haven't made it. Well, <laughs> let me in, baby. Let me get that call. Ari, some, my agent called me. Maybe you're lucky you didn't get that call. <laughs> okay. Think, think of it that way. Okay. So at the end of the day, when you invest in any startup, and this includes FTX and plenty of others, Eight out of ten times you lose your money since 1954 when they started sure, sure. compiling these stats. Sure. Now, sometimes it's alleged fraud, sometimes bad execution, sometimes bad market, sometimes bad product, but for whatever reason, eight out of ten times you lose money. Right. So the people that invested in FTX, if you, people are asking me, well, isn't this going to change investing forever? No. Nothing's going to change. Sure. Yeah, because yeah. Obvi we obviously, yeah, we're, yeah. we're gunning for that two times where we make a thousand X on our money. Right. The next morning after I lost that 18 million, yes, I was pissed. Mm. Okay. <laughs> but it didn't change anything about what I do as an investor. I get right up and I go at it again because I have, if every time I had a loser investment, I had to go yeah. to Congress, I'd need an apartment there. Right. I mean, we lose a lot of deals, but yeah. every once in a while I get a monster hit and it pays for all the mistakes. FTX is in the past for me, too bad. I, I feel sick about it. We all look like idiots. Right. But we got to move on. We have to fund the next venture. We have sure. to fund the next entrepreneur. But, but how did he, how did he penetrate? You didn't answer the question. How did he get? So, you're, 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 I, so I, I, I know, I, I, like, I, 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 I got the five talking points, but how did he just? <laughs> How did he slide in the DMs? How did he slide in the DMs? I know you're recording this, it's all good. How did he slide in the DMs of your heart? That, come on. So, the way Because I've worked, gotten the call. I've remember, gotten the call. I'm in two places on this. Yeah, yeah. I was a paid spokesperson, yes. Yes. But I was also an investor. I took millions of dollars and invested yes. them in FTX International and US. Right. So, I'm getting squeezed on both sides on this point. At the end of the day, the way I look at it is, okay, 
I have an agent. He gets contacted and says, look, do you want to be a paid spokesperson yeah, yeah. for this? I said, I'm, inter I'm interested in crypto. What do we know about this company? Yeah. We know that it's got the biggest investor list I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. But, then you, but then you reply all to, like, Kevin O'Leary, all agents at CAA.com, and you go, I've said that this is dog shit. Reply, and then you send. No, I didn't And then they go, they go, Kevin, comma, enter. <laughs> It's that's a, not, that's not it's how it a goes big down. bag. The Kev. way this works is you go in back and say, okay, 1.8 billion raised. Who's in the raise? Yeah, yeah. Who did the due diligence? Plenty of them did. And it's the heavy hitters. Huge hitters. Hitters. But we all know each other. We're in the private equity business. And yeah. I said, okay, somebody dillied this thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the parents were compliance lawyers sure. out of Stanford. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's a very unfortunate outcome, and yeah. everybody looks stupid. Because you do do your due diligence. I've seen you. You are a savage. I do. Well, on, okay, have you seen him when he is on Shark Tank? Yeah. If someone doesn't yeah. come correct with the due diligence, you suplex them through <laughs> tables. Play it, play it. It's crazy. Check yeah. this out. I've looked at the valuation, and I say, are you guys out of your friggin' minds? What stops somebody who actually knows how to make shirts and deliver them do this and make a lot of money and crush you like the cockroach that you are? This is a very bad idea. It howls at the moon, and you should take it out behind the barn and shoot it. Look, I get the, the passion piece, but you know what I'd be crying about? the fact you're not making a profit. Yeah. If you were in one of my business school classes, I would spray you down with water, and every time you say, I don't know, I'd hit you with an electric cattle prod. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, listen. Now, listen. Don't boo. No, don't boo. Don't boo. Don't boo. Don't boo. Don't do that. Kevin, no, I'm serious. Kevin O'Leary came on the show, and he was man enough to come on the show, and we're having a conversation, and we spoke backstage, and we were polite to one another, and we're going to be polite. So we're not going to do that booing stuff. Well, in that, so no, much. I mean that sincerely. But believe it, me, but wait, I can take it. <laughs> I know. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. This is about this is about doing the due diligence. That's what spraying that person down and 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 buzzing them with the cattle prod. So obviously, obviously, SBF and FTX, your boy, yeah. has lost eight billion dollars of. Investor funds, and clearly, from the reports, no one did their due diligence. So I'm asking you, on behalf of The Daily Show, will you fly to Palo Alto, where he's on house arrest, <laughs> and spray this <laughs> down and hit him with a cattle prod? Enough, yeah. enough of the 40 appearances. Enough of the four-minute segments on Squawk Box. Let's take a Southwest <laughs> flight tonight. Layover in Chicago. It's on me. We land SFO. My dad will pick us up, and we will go to you SBS. Know, I think that's a little extreme. Okay. <laughs> just, just a little. I mean, look, at the end of the day, um, think about this. At the end of the day, a lot of people no lost money. Retail got fleeced. That's yeah, what happened at the end it. of the day. Okay, did Lehman Brothers change anything? No. Enron? No. Bear Stearns? No. Long-term capital? No. There's always going to be the bad actors. Sure. This is capitalism, and every once in a while, there's a bad actor. You just went through a whole, you know, litany of them. Right. And the system self-corrects. If you do bad things, shit happens to you. Bad shit. And I think that's okay. That's our system. The, the whole idea is you can make money without being a fraudster. This is a great country. You can be an entrepreneur. You can start a company with a great product and become a multimillionaire. That's the path that people take 99% of the time. And we should celebrate that. Okay. This comes along, you know, alleged fraud like this, it's gonna go through the system. Hopefully we're gonna get a huge recovery for everybody that lost their money. Already the rumors are we're at six out of eight billion. They found that, 6.1 billion. Who knows what else will be coming? I wanna help everybody on this situation, but I've moved on and so's everybody else. I have a theory. Yeah. I have a theory. So, in corporate America, I see a lot of urban professional elites with LinkedIn accounts here in the crowd tonight. <laughs> in, in corporate America, they have a thing called CYA, cover your ass. And I think, Mr. O'Leary, you're making the 70 appearances right now yeah. and testifying before Congress to let people know, hey, 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 HR, something f***ed up happened. Someone burned down the house while mom and dad left.
but you kind of were a part of the arson to begin with. Well, let me correct you on that for a moment, okay? Okay. During the period when everybody was trying to get allocation sure. to FTX, particularly FTX US, hottest deal on the street sure. in, in 2021, I got countless calls from people saying, let me in on your allocation, you owe me, we've, been done, we've done business together. I said, guys, it's a startup. It's a big one, it's a $23 billion startup, but yeah. it's a startup. If I'm gonna take this ride, I'll do it with my own dough. I'm not gonna put anybody else's money into it. Okay. Nobody lost money on that deal in terms of investing on it except me. Okay. So I don't, I don't have the problem where I owe somebody you know, an apology for investing beside me. I owe everybody and all of us involved owe an apology for not knowing it was an alleged fraud. But you know, this happens from time to time. But in my mind, but wait, I, can, I can go to sleep every night sure. knowing that it was my money, I lost it, I ate it, shame on me, but it doesn't change what I do in the morning. I'm a very fortunate guy. I can take huge hits and I move on and I keep going. That is the essence of entrepreneurship. Totally. You're gonna get kicked to the ground once in a sure. while. Can... And this was a big kick in the, where it hurts. Right. <laughs> As somebody said to me, the, the, the one I remember the most, um, you know, the economist on CNBC said to me, we came out of the green room after I had one of those countless you know, presentations on there about it. Right. And he said, Kevin, $18 million, that's a lot of guitars. <laughs> and he's right. Yeah, you love guitars. He I loves guitars, guitars, just for, he's, <laughs> he's telling a story that's not great because you have to set up the premise for the punchline. <laughs> This is, this is my story. comedy shark tank. I love this story. Okay, listen, here's what has to happen. You have to be able to expose your position. When you say you lost money, the only way for us to truly know is if a forensic accountant comes in. I so, want that. So you want, you want the no full records. transparency. Everybody, you don't understand, everybody has So you got the 18 mil. Look, me and you, we're in yeah. Hollywood, not these regular normies. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's have the big boy talk. I want to have the talk. So, so out, out of the 18 mil, well, wait, hang on, let me, let me get him in on it. So out of the 18 mil, you guys don't know this. There's agents, managers, business managers. And the IRS. Uh, all of them, FICA. FICA. They FICA you all day. I did not say that. You but, did. but, out of that 18 mil, my man probably saw, let's go six to seven. Now, that's just straight cash. But we don't know. Some of it could be USD. Some of it could be some of that sweet, sweet equity position. But we won't know until a forensic accountant comes in. And we want that. I have a hunch. Yeah. I think you didn't lose a whole lot of the shirt off your back, but retail did. Um, all of my money on the comp, just so you understand this, by the contract was in an FTX account. So 18 comes in, as you sure. are correct, about half of it pays taxes and agents and the unions and all that stuff. Sure. The rest goes into the account, and on Saturday morning, November 10th, it was scraped out along with all the trading records. Everybody there, including me, does not know where that money is, or do they have the trading records? Do I want to hire a forensic accountant? Absolutely. I've disclosed I had 32 positions. It wasn't cash, it was crypto and all kinds of coins and tokens. And so they're all gone, and I'd like to find out where they are. So would another million people. But it was also house money. That's the key difference. How do you say that? You're playing off of cake. What's coming to you? Hey, we're oh, giving you a big head start. The million cash I put into the equity. Sure. That's not a million cash? That's a million cash. I'll give you that. Thank you. Okay, so you've lost one million I, USD. You know, you've lost one million USD personal. Yes. Okay. Actually, more. It was, I think, 1.25 million. Okay. So the only and, way we can I truly, tell you, but, you, but you're making every, that heuristic. I, you're making that heuristic based off of that 6.6 6 to 7 million coming in. Look, we're gonna do math I all day. My, I, but I, we, get, let, I get paid only, for a lot of things. The only way we can really come to the conclusion of this yeah. is if we do the old rule when you're sexting a partner. I'll show you yours if you show me. <laughs> the only way my, let's not we don't need to dance around it look it's fine it's fine it's fine my whole deal is i've been totally transparent with it the reason i've gone on and talked about it openly is i think we can all learn a lesson from this and i'm teaching this case at harvard actually i think there's a lot to learn from it because it's a great example of when you do portfolio work when you put big money to work you got to know you're never safe 
You yeah. just don't know what's going to happen. Right. And this case is crazy. We haven't even seen the end of this yet. We don't know what's going to happen. The records are supposedly backed up on the Amazon servers, and no one's seen them yet. I don't know where that money went. I'd like to find out. And that's the same question every institution has. I'm, I'm one of the only institutions walking around talking about it, but so what? It's a horrible outcome. It's a bad investment. I've made bad ones in the past. I'm going to make bad ones in the future, but I'm pretty good at good ones as well. So that's the way it works. I hear you. And I think there's a detail that you need to add to your Harvard class, which is, and all the other Maybe places I that you go. I bring you with me. Uh, sure. I'll pull up. I mean, if, if, if Kim Kardashian can pull up, I'll pull up. Now listen, wait, Kevin, Kevin, let me, let me just finish. Let me finish. I will pull up. I will sincerely pull Why up. Why not? Okay. Here's the thing. When you go on The Daily Show right now, or when you go on our friend Aaron Ross Sorkin's show, right? Yeah. What, when you say 80% of these companies fail, they that do. is correct. And let's say it's even more. Let's say it's 90%. No, it isn't. It's 80. So yeah, it's, yeah. The stats have been around since but, 1954. But what you're, what you're not accounting for is you're speaking to the upper 1% that can lose that money. Everybody else that's listening should probably just put their money in ETF, set it aside, yeah, go to sleep, wake up 30 years later. But, <laughs> but, but. You're not disclosing that. You're not disclosing, again, once again, your position, how much you've been personally paid up front. To oh, I did. I told exactly what I No, no, no. Not, not about FTX. Just yeah. in general, with the myriad of companies that you're part Oh, I see. Do you well, see what I'm saying? Guess what? I'm a capitalist. I'm an investor. That's what I do. I'm not I'm ashamed of it. I love to do what I do. I help all kinds of entrepreneurs, and I'm sure. proud of that. We don't make money all the time is the point I'm trying to make. When you invest, you take risks. And that's why you need diversity. You need a lot of stocks. ETF's a good idea, it has a lot of stocks, whatever. At the end of the day, But it's though, not a whatever. That position, doing that, putting your money in an SPY, S&P 500 for 30 years, is going to benefit 95% of the population. And the, and the key problem is, is people turn to you, people like Kevin O'Leary, Mark Cuban, because they see you very differently than, say, Larry David. But we take different... Or Shaquille O'Neal, or all the other people that were in the FTX commercial. Well, Mr. Wonderful says this is a good position. In reality, every time you go on Squawk Box, actually, or that, any of your many... Is, wait, 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 I, let me I just finish. I'll let you... We have I all the time promote in the world. crypto positions. I talk about platforms and sure. diversity. I didn't do commercials, and I never would, because I don't advocate single products. You don't, don't do, do commercials. That. I mean, you're on every third commercial during the commercial breaks of... Shark Tank. You know, I'm talking, you're talking about FTX though, right? You're talking about FTX. I'm not talking about FTX. Oh, I, I'm saying commercial. in general. Oh, yeah. I, I understand. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you see so, what I'm saying? Yes. I guess my yes. Is, if you go to your YouTube channel, yeah. just on your YouTube channel, the fourth or fifth video on your YouTube channel is, is this the bottom of the market? Do you know what that's signaling to retail investors? It's signaling them to either pop in or pop out. When in reality, you should just go, hey, 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 real talk, you should have one class at Harvard, it should be 10 minutes. Listen to me right now. <laughs> Listen to me. Put your money in a Vanguard portfolio, VTSAX, or S&P 500. Maybe do a bond position right now because it's giving you 4%. Set it aside and turn off Squawk Box. Actually, don't even listen to what I wow, have to you're say. Being, you're being tough on Squawk Box. They do a service. People are interested. Listen, I understand indexing. That's great. I do that too. But if you want extraordinary returns, you've got to take risks on entrepreneurs. You have to back people that don't know their outcomes. Right, so then your podcast and TV it's, show should, to tell me, should be a, just... If well, you wait. had a chance okay, to invest sure, sure, in sure. Google when I'll its valuation finish. was $5 million, which, do you wish you did that? Sure. Yes. Well, I, I but yes hindsight no. is twenty twenty always, and you will lose that way. You will, you, Why you would can, you lose you that can, way? You can lose 95% of the time that way, trying to pick stocks. So? Kevin, you know this. Even the great Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, the goats of capitalism, even they say, now, these geriatric coffin dodgers, now, <laughs> at their shareholders meeting, go, listen to me, listen to me, if I could do it all over again, no, 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 no. I would just put it in an index what fund they, and, what they say. and tuck it away. And we'll play the clip, Kevin, it's on YouTube. Listen, let's, let's not do this. Can, can I ask you Look, just a question? I, I, we I can do back and forth. I just want to ask you this, because I mean this sincerely. I've been trying to crack this. Are you a great investor or are you a great spokesperson? Because I think you're the latter. Okay, I don't agree with you. Let me tell you what's happened sure. over the last 10 years. The ability to tell a company's story 
to get people to understand what their mission is and the benefit of their product is highly valuable, very. Because there's a million stories out there and the biggest problem every company has, including giant S&P countries, companies, is how do they get customer acquisition? How do they acquire customers? Eight out of 10 companies fail in America after 36 months because they're never able to get their customer acquisition costs below the lifetime value. Right. That's where I change the equation. If I invest in your company, I tell your story. That's what my job is to do. Yes, I take risk. I'm, I'm fortunate to have money to invest, but I get behind it and tell the story. And that's what we do on Shark Tank. Why are Shark Tank companies so successful? Why do so many more of them make money than the traditional eight out of 10? Because we tell their story to 100 million people every year. That's the magic sauce. So I think I'm a great investor by being able to be a great storyteller too. People need to know what the product does, what the merits of it are. That's why they try it. That's why it's important to tell these stories. You talk to Do any you shark. you feel guilty? I, I hear what you're saying. So tell me, you know, because I go to couples therapy. <laughs> Let me tell you what I'm hearing. Okay. And by, I mean this sincerely. Yeah. Tell me if what I'm telling you is right or wrong. What I hear you're saying is, no, Hassan, I disagree with you. I think I am a great investor and a great spokesperson that you do both, that if I see something, a seed of a good idea in your company, I'm great at communication, I'm good at the micro content. Both are true. I can communicate those things. Okay, so then you have, I would imagine you would feel some level of guilt when some of the companies that you are promoting end up leaving retail investors holding the bag where you're like, damn, no. I promoted this. this is where I disagree with you, here's why. You've, you know with certainty in venture investing, investing in startups, since the beginning of time, eight out of 10 are going to fail. I know that, you know that, and the whole world knows that because those are the stats. There's nothing you can do to, do to change but that. But the system of you going on these shows, Squawk Box is financial FOMO. The graphs, the ticker, but you're on, got guys are swinging kettlebells in Greenwich. Do I gotta get in now or later? You know this. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Well, you may get in now. Like DoorDash IPO. Do I get in now later? Again, it's that FOMO. I gotta get in now. I think what so you're we missing, philosophically what you're missing disagree. In your that's messaging all. is, sure. and I would agree with you on this. And I think if you're going to promote the idea of investing, you should also promote the idea of diversity, diversification. Sure. You can't put it all in any one position yeah. or any one institution. Yeah. Because you don't know when there's going to be an ex Lehman brother or a Bear Stearns yeah. or when a stock goes to zero. Right. By the way, big companies go to zero too. They sure. do. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so that sure. happens. So if you have diversification, and I learned this from my mother, never more than 20% in any one sector. We have 11 sectors in the American economy. Never more than 5% in any one stock. That is the definition of diversity. And that's what I do with my own portfolio. That's how you stay out of trouble. Okay. You obviously. You would agree with that. Sure, sure. These I rest my case, Your Honor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait a second. But when you are going on a six minute segment, if you did this, if you pulled up on your next Squawk Box segment yeah. and said that, amazing. I do say but that. But you don't, you're, you give Well, you must picks. be not, you're not watching the right segment. I've seen you do 40 of them. I, I mean, I, you, you're, you're putting up shots, my man, and some of them are just air balls. Now listen, if you are a great investor, let me ask you this, I'm and a great I'm spokesman. I'm proud of my track record. Why are you on Cameo? I love Cameo. Are, 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 I love are great Cameo. investors on Cameo? I love put up the graphic. Cameo. That, that's, I, put I up love the graphic. Cameo. You can book a personalized video yep. for $1,500. Yep. You can book a business video. I don't even know what do that you know is why for $6,500. Do you understand why? Because this helps entrepreneurs launch their products and services. 99% of my Cameos are, is a business that can't afford to go to an agent and pay half a million dollars. This is fantastic. What they've done, my biggest mistake on Cameo was uh -huh. not to take down 20% of the stock when it was offered to me. Okay. I should have bought 20%. All right, I mean, see. it was really a fantastic idea. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm an advocate and I'm gonna keep doing it. And uh -huh. people book them because it helps them. I, I'll do anything to help an entrepreneur. That's you, who I am. Do you, let me ask just a few sub-questions. First of all, Cameo is- Oh, these uh, haven't been tough questions? No, no. <laughs> Sub-questions, sub-questions. Okay, okay. First of all, Cameo's absolute dog shit. Uh, it's, a, it's a way for Rachel Dolezal to wish you, wish you happy birthday. I'm not joking. Number two, do you think big boy investors do cameos? Do you think Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger 
tap dance for $6,500. Nassim Taleb is out they here doing not, a they business venture, video. They are not venture investors. They do you, don't start up entrepreneurs. They don't do, do you any need of that. the 1500 or $6,500? Do you need any of it? Listen, I spend plenty of dollars doing what I do, and I give to all kinds of philanthropic This is not about charity. I'm talking about the actual qu qualitative, the quality of that, that work. I do of, that, of that work because people tell me, and they have for years doing it, this has really helped me. Okay. I'm happy to do it. Read the comments. I mean, if you want to be a critic, go ahead, but read the comments. I, I, I mean, I mean, that's the, the, the real com test. The comment of a person asking for a 50 no, 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 no. or $6,500. People $6, actually use them. Okay, sure. I don't do many $1,500 ones. I, They're all the $6,500 ones? Unfortunately, I'm a little... Because you know, if you're a business oh and, you, and you want to use it, you got you to pay the I rights. feel very sorry for those people. Well, I'm sorry, you know, I'm, I'm going to charge you $1,200 for yours. I'm going to give you a discount. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to do that. I, uh, I get it. Okay. Listen. Listen. It's, uh, it's hard to rattle me on things I know that work, you know? I mean, you didn't, I mean, the cameo thing is really bad, man. It's a truly bad look. It's, I don't agree. I don't agree. It's, it's for grifters, sociopaths, sycophants, and O.J. Simpson. I mean, like, I, there's I, the people that say, are on cameo. I it is you're a little negative on cameo. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you guys like cameo? Oh, no, don't boo, don't boo. I mean, I was just asking. Okay. Um, listen, this has been a... This has I been a very you interesting say conversation. Something nice about small business here. They're, yeah, they're yeah. Really... Let, let's do the small business. So we spoke backstage. He wants to plug the small business thing. But can I can I just say this one thing? And we'll plug the small business thing. Yeah. We're going to do this whole. This is all going to be online, so it's all good. Got it. So I think the reason why I'm very passionate about this is because I think there is a ecosystem of a lot of VC people and people with money going on these shows, yeah. giving advice to retail. And look, I think entertainment is important, but when Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith give their hot takes, it doesn't potentially affect people's 401ks or their bank account. When you give financial tips, it's like a doctor giving a diagnosis to a patient they can't even see. You don't know the number you, of people you, that you're you know, you know inadvertently let me let me tell you or inadvertently hurting. Let me tell you why I disagree with you. Go ahead. Do you think I should go? Just don't. I, that's all I'm saying. Be, ask, be careful let, when you no, with no, people's no, bank let me accounts. Ask everybody in the audience. Sure. Do you think I should go to high schools as I do? and talk to them about financial literacy and about credit card debt totally. and about stocks and bonds, is that a good thing to totally. do? Totally. You should give them J.L. Collins' book, The Simple Path to Wealth, and one of the addendums should be, turn off any program that I'm on. Yeah. Besides Shark Tank. I, Besides Shark okay, Tank. Okay, so I, I'm okay. very proud to be on Shark Tank. Shark Tank is awesome. Season 14, it's awesome. I teach it's awesome. high schoolers and I teach graduate MIT engineers. Look, there is, there is a, you, you are allowed to have an opinion, and I'm glad you do, and it's an important part of the dialogue and the, and the discussion we're having here. But at the end of the day, the more people that understand the financial system in this country, the better this country is. Okay. Now, you may not agree on the message, that's okay. And that's the wonderful thing about this country. We can have this dialogue, and we don't have to agree. And I don't agree on half the stuff you're saying. Okay. But I respect the fact you have the opinion. That's good with me. I appreciate I'm, I'm that. Okay and, I pre and I appreciate you and, and being respectful way, and stuff. I really appreciate no, it. No, I do. Um, do you want to do the small business thing? Yeah, I'll yeah. do my pitch, and then we'll wrap okay. it up. Okay, let's do Go it. Go ahead. So, so you wanted to talk about small business. Let's talk about that, and then we'll do my pitch to let you. Me, we'll let me up. tell you what we should be worried about in this country right now, and a new uh, ambassadorship that I have. Okay. I know you like to be critical, but I want to hear you criticize this one, okay? okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? So, everybody remembers PPP. Yeah. Um, all of our companies... You were scamming, too? No, no, no. I mean, for, I mean, if you're doing the cameos, no, you never no, know. I'm just, I didn't do well, a You get a lot more than 6500 for the government. Right. No, I didn't. That's fine. Anyway... That is funny. You know it's funny. All of... Margin... Because you, you could have you could gotten 30K off that you've PPP. You've done better jokes okay. than that one. I'm going to okay. give you a 4 out of 10. So, look. Let's get to, go, the point go, go. is the program was launched and all small companies used it, they went to their bank and got yeah. it. At the same time, another program was launched called the Employee Retention Credit. You've never heard of it, have you? I have not. Okay. Small business is really hurting now because rates have gone up so high on them. You know, people talk about 6% Fed rate. Small business is borrowing at 18% now. Yeah. They used to borrow at 9 or 7. So it, it's been hell for them for the last two years. The government has $250 billion sitting 
waiting for them to pick it up on their payroll because they forgot to go get it. It's sitting there. If you have a small business between five and 500 people, you can make up to $26,000 as a gift from the government towards your business one time. So if you have 50 employees, that's half a million dollars. Right. If you have 100 employees, that's 1.1 million. I'm pounding the drum everywhere I can to tell every company in America that qualifies, because you only have 23 more months to get it, go file. Go file for right. it. Thank and, you for sharing that information. Well, thank you. Thank you. I mean, I think that's, that's a very important thing to do. And, so before tell, we get out Tell of me here. why that's a bad thing. I'm not. I, I think you're sharing a very important piece of information. Thank you. In a not entertaining way, but it's important nonetheless. <laughs> but it's important. It's important, and it's great. How Can many people are entertained by $1.1 million cash? There we go. I'm entertained. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have Mr. O'Leary on the show. I got to pitch you. Go ahead. So here's my pitch. I think it's going to go badly. Yeah. Here's my pitch. <laughs> here's my pitch. I mean... Okay. I wonder why. This is my pitch. I think you go on these shows. You are part of a system in the media, specifically financial hot take media, the CNBCs, the podcast appearances. People turn to you for financial advice. They ask you, how are the markets doing? Yeah. What's up? What's down? What are you into? You give your opinions because people turn to you because you're Mr. Wonderful. You obviously look like a successful entrepreneur and businessman. Advertently or inadvertently, you give people your opinion. People listen to that, that opinion and then make investment choices based on what they hear from you. Do you think you I'm create? The only let, let me just finish. Let me finish. To? Let me finish. Okay. You give those opinions. It creates potential chaos and risk at scale because it's on the internet. And then you face no downside consequences when those people get fleeced. That's oh, not I fair. I totally disagree with you. Is this a pitch where I invest? <laughs> the second one. We haven't gotten to the Oh, we haven't got that one yet. Yeah. So let me yeah, tell yeah. you Hang on. Why. Wait, wait. I got to get to the end. We got to get to the okay, end. Okay, well. Now, the second part yeah. is, I've thought is to myself. Is there a question in here somewhere? It's not the end. Okay. The second part is, I've thought to myself, I go, hey, you've clearly made picks and taken some massive L's, so he either cares about it and feels very bad about it, which you may, or you know you're taking those L's, but if you keep the three-card Monty going and keep appearing on other shows and make other picks, you'll just bury the L's you had in the back. If you beat the algorithm, they can't even catch up to all the L's in the past. The problem is retail got left holding the bag a long time ago. So L, so, L for loser? Loser, yeah, or loss, loss. <laughs> so I think what you do is good. I think you are entertaining on Shark Tank. When you leave that environment and give financial advice, people, regular people, potentially get hurt. So I mean this humbly. This is my pitch to you. Yeah. I want to quote the great Laura Ingram. I think you should focus on your strengths and shut up in Shark Tank. No, no, you, you reversed that, right? You want me to, my strength to Shark Tank, you said, you want me to shut up on financial literacy. Which, which one is no, it? No, 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 your strength is, so when, okay, so jokes are great <laughs> when you, you have to explain them. No, 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 so Maybe she told LeBron to shut up and dribble because dribbling is his strength, right? Okay. So I said Shark Tank is your strength. Yes. So then using that, you just carry that. <laughs> <laughs> So, I so, used to so my whole point is my, my actual daytime job is, is managing capital. That's what I do. Yeah. And I've been doing it for 30 years. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's a career I'm very proud of, and I'm proud of my reputation. I had some mistakes and losers and bad investments, just like everybody else does. But long term, the best way to do it is always tell the truth, and you never have to remember what you said. Okay. And so everything I've told you is the truth. It's not all good news. And by the way, in investing, you are going to have some losers. You've learned that tonight, right? Sure, of course. And so I wish I could only have winners. I never will. And everybody that invests has learned, whether I'm involved in their lives or not, that there are losers in investing. Yes. That's what happens. But as you've suggested, the market does give you, on average, about a 9% return over a long period of time. When it's an S&P 500, so the addendum is that you're in another tax bracket. Don't listen to what you're saying because you're balling and you can take the losses. That's it. Perfect. Perfect. You can take the losses in retail camp. Mr. Kevin O'Leary, I want to say thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. For joining the show. Yeah. And I want to say thank you for having this conversation and for us being respectful of another. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kevin O'Leary. Thank you very much.